The Bond Bug, an iconic FX kit re-released after a gap of just the 48 years, and apparently the biggest pre-order FX have ever taken. So, you've got one, you want to know how to put it together? Find out more right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Indeed, today I'm building the Vintage Classics re-release of the Bond Bug from Airfix. I know a lot of you have got these, hoping this might help you build it at the end of the day. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these, you might want to check out also the box opening video I've already put online. That's got a bit of a history of the car as well. If you've got one, you're waiting to put it together, very much this is the video for you. If you like any of my videos, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are published. If you want to give a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. If you're thinking of buying this or indeed anything else from the FX online store, maybe you might want to click on the link that's in the information box below because that way anything you buy um, on the store and at no extra cost to you, FX will make a donation to the running of this channel and you can still use your FX club discount if you have one and you can still collect your hobby points as well. Okay, well that's enough of all of that. Let's crack on and see how I built my Bond Bug Vintage Classics release from FX. First thing to do is to put these cross members into the main rails here. Um, I'd start with the two bottom cross members here first because They've got square holes and they're a bit more substantial than the other two. Um, and there we go. So we go this way around. Yeah. Into that joint. Like so. This front foremost cross member fits in there. There's a tab here. There's a hole on the underside of the tab. It needs to be on the underside because that's where the uh, spring, damper spring for the front uh, front suspension goes. So you want that pointing downwards. And likewise, at the back of these, I've got this, it's got to point straight back like that. I'm going to put the rear suspension in here. This is the rear axle and the diff. You'll notice on the differential, uh, the box the line coming into the box here, there's a notch. And that notch needs to go on this side. Then it goes through these wishbone type things. So wishbones, double wishbones, I don't know. They're not wishbones like as they're, they're not Y-shaped. The suspension, anyway. Suspension arms. Going to go underneath that and they go into these, these holes on the side. Now I'm building a more modern vehicle. At the motor truck, it's a more modern. It's a more modern kit of a truck at the moment, and the suspension is about twenty times more difficult than this. So, if you're thinking this is difficult, get yourself a modern kit of a truck. You know, a, a, a some sort of military vehicle type truck, and I promise you, this is actually fairly straightforward. So that's that's kind of the thing we've got. Instead of these, these come out at an angle. I'm just trying to keep the angle 
equal between the two sides like that. And let that set for a bit. Little hair off there, there we go. Yeah, let that set for a bit. And these coil springs and damper units can go on the back like that. And just a little bit of glue to keep them in place. This steering box comes in two halves, which you stick together, and then it just sits on this cross member, like so. Like that. Make sure the holes at the front, make sure it's lined up properly. And so here I'm going to put this. Uh, Core spring damper in and the front suspension goes in it doesn't actually sort of sit in as you'd imagine it just sort of slots against those little marks on the cross member and then it tweezers if you can just tease this into place so no, not quite there we go so there we are so it sits, sits like this and that's the Suspension just to put in the steering arm next and that will be us for the moment on this and we can Spray it build the engine and put everything together Right, I'll freely admit that this bit makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. So You know, I've tried to replicate What's in the drawings here? Fairly closely but it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, unless, unless this arm is supposed to be on this side and this cuts back, I'll try that maybe. But that's not how it's drawn. But anyway, let's see. Right, I think I've sorted it out. So the, the, link to the steering the pin out out this there's, there's the steering box it's got a pin on the side okay so make sure that pins on this side the arm goes on that pin goes down here onto this side of this this linkage here there's a pin as well so that's connected then this goes forward onto the little elbow arm and that all then sort of fits together and kind of fits within the overall geometry of the chassis here but I'll tell you what those those drawings are not clear at that point but we got there we got there in the end we can start making the engine now so the two halves of block go together first while we're at it we can put the sump on as well And the starter motor can just slip in here, like this, and on the other side we have the seat intake, or is this the exhaust I wonder, it's probably, it might be the exhaust because there's a bit of a downpipe on it, I don't know the exhaust sort of fits under here somewhere. Right, so we go, so the exhaust sits up here. I presume it's a combined exhaust and inlet, maybe it's a one side, it's not a cross cross flow. Um yeah, there we go. That's the the engine sorted out. Now I'm gonna put the prop shaft on and then let that dry, paint it all, because this will be painted more sort of silver and steel 
than the other more the rest of the things mainly black but there'll be a lot of black on this and steel and whatever else and maybe just a little bit of um maybe a little bit of wash of some sort of engine grime or something like that and then we can do the rest of the, the kit there's also this um bar goes between the chassis and the French short casing. I'm guessing this is an anti tramp bar. And it stops the um, rear axle bouncing around under load. Wouldn't swear to it though. I'm guessing that's what that is. I'll just put that in there. So I, I change my mind. I'm going to put the whole the whole thing in, and then spray the whole thing, and then pick out the engine details where I can. So the prop shaft goes into the rear differential like that. There you go. The engine sits in like that. There we go. quite a twist on it which is a bit distressing still anyway that seems to be about where it should be so we'll just glue those in and so we come to a bit of a problem <clears throat> this part 32 here with the rear parcel shelf sort of thing my part 32 ain't got a parcel shelf the part finish design sort of blobby ends to it which is not flash it's actually quite a deep mold if you look at the side of it it's got kind of a lip to it it kind of suggests that there should be something here it's not a separate part before you ask it is this part and the problem is when this goes on if it goes on um you can see there's a a whole huge gap there which is actually rubbish um, I don't like that at all I'm going to ask Airfix if that's what's going on with that and hope they can let me know if it kind of holds up work on the kit now you can't just have a gap there it's got to be like a shelf there's a window fits in the back and again it's not like the you know, they've gone to a, a lot of trouble to make sure these windows are going to fit. And it's not even closely matching up. So I think there's a problem with this part. There we go. So to recap, this was the uh, mismolded part, the the edges here aren't molded correctly and there's no parcel shelf i emailed fx and two days later emailed them on monday two days later the replacement part arrived with the shelf with the little horns as you can see on the top corner um i'm not sure what this is uh, it's a whatever it's it don't belong there so yeah when you um put the part in there is nowhere for that bit to go so that's got to come off but other than that there we go two days and the part was replaced then i'm going to put the bottom half of the bodywork on and just glue that up sometimes redrawing the diagrams um relabeling them and all the rest of it really doesn't work very well and here's a good case the uh, brake and clutch pedals come up and point to this thing here i don't know what this is but there isn't one on the kit these do actually fit really nicely into the wheel well which is where i would expect them to be not halfway up here so these are going to go into the wheel well the accelerator pedal seems to suggest that the bottom of the pedal you put here well that would be great except again the, the pedal is going to be halfway up the, the dashboard it goes the other way up but i'll show you how those go there is indeed a hole for the um 
steering wheel it's a very big hole it just slots in there um, the best thing to do with the steering wheel probably is to put the the steering wheel support in here first put the steering wheel itself onto the steering bar here put those in place and that will give you don't don't try and line it up with that just yet okay well i'll show you how all these go together right first of all the foot pedals for the brake and the clutch go in here first the accelerator pedal can go into here so they're roughly lined up there that way we're going to um, slide up there paint in a minute okay the steering wheel support arm goes in here like so a few more pieces to go in include the handbrake which goes in here the gear stick goes in And of course, the instruments go in as well. Okay. Like so. The petrol tank goes in here. Then the chassis assembly. Can go in then the exhaust can go in now the exhaust goes over this cross member but well no actually it's under this cross member technically isn't it but over the axle because remember we're upside down at the moment and then just connects in there. Each wheel has a hub that goes in like so. I should just tack that with a little bit of glue. So. And then a wheel rim goes in like this. I, I can drop the radiator into position now. It's just like a little um, clasp it sits into. You can sit up against the bottom of the chassis like that. And I can start putting the wheels in as well. So I've got the base coat on, which is like a shadow, and I'm putting I'm putting in the colour that is essentially the skin tone. This is actually the basic skin tone here. And already you can see, you know, features coming through. It's it's a nice moulding. I have to say, it's a very nice moulding to work with. This FX one. We can already see some of the highlights nicely picked out and i'm only going to be using um, a three color system here because um, basically because you're not going to see very much because it's going to be through a window so i'm going to um just actually I'll just add a little bit more well, as you can see here i painted his shirt gray and i painted some shadows in here now, of course, this isn't a grey shirt, it's a white shirt, but you can't get more of a highlight than white. So, you paint the shirt grey, and then you start adding highlights in white, and it will look like a white shirt. Okay, 
Right, first thing we're going to do is place our driver. Where we want to be. It's got to be that's about there. In fact, like that. So the steering wheel then goes through here. Might be a bit tricky getting all this these parts to play ball together. There we go. There we go. Almost there. Support here. There we go. E. That's all together. Fantastic. Really happy with that. Um, except he should be a little bit further forward. Yeah, that's close enough. There you go. Yay, happy. Then the front can go on. The top, really. So, and we'll just tack that into place with some glue. There we go, with just a few extra pieces, it's done. Okay, all right, look. So my video camera chewed up some of the files of this. So from the last point, which I think was putting the uh, the top cover on, um, the windows just click into place really, really simply. Remember the windows have been redesigned, so uh, they should fit really, really well, and they do. The um, what else did we do here? The lights, oh, yeah, you can see the light cluster here at the back. Those are just single pieces of plastic, uh, they just get stuck up. What I do is I, I paint the back of them silver, then glue them on, and then uh, glue them on with like a PVA, and then I'll just put a bit of transparent paint on. Same for the uh, things down at the very bottom, like the indicators right down the nose here. And then the um, lights as well. Now with the headlamps, um, it's not immediately obvious from the instructions which way around everything goes. So the thing to remember is that the concave, no, convex surface, it sort of bulges out. That goes at the front of the headlamp unit. Okay. And then you can see that the bottom of the headlamp is slightly smaller than the top of the headlamp so you get a way round that they go so they just sort of glue in again silver on the back glue them in um, and paint them up job's done and then the decal sheet which was fine the only problem i had on the decal sheet is that the big black stripe that goes over the top um, is actually a little bit too long i found maybe i've done something wrong but i think it's too long um, but other than that, it all looks fab and groovy, as I guess it should. It's a fun kit to make, I have to say. It was a couple of little challenges, but for a vintage classic, it was fun. It's an interesting little vehicle. It's bright and breezy. And do you know what? Yes, I do think pretty much anyone can make one. I'm glad I did. Uh, will I be making another one? Ah, no point, really. I've already made one. I've made my Bond bug now. But if had I not made one, would I regret it? Yeah, I probably would, because I actually enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, sorry for the missing files, but you really didn't miss much. So there we have the FX Bond bug. Um, it's a very decent little kit, I have to say. It benefits from having had the glass parts, transparent parts, completely retooled. And, of course, it benefits from the brand new cartograph decals that are included. But generally speaking, it goes together well. The parts still fit pretty well, I have to say. And it makes a decent little kit of a quirky and yet strangely iconic car. If you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please remember Imperial Thumbs Up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are published. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Take your care now and goodbye.